I have to tell you right off the bat that it is the first week of December. This movie doesn't open up until the second week of January. So when you're watching this, I did this six weeks ago. And that's one of the tough parts of being a bona fide film critic, because I really like this movie. I had an awful lot of fun with it, and I had to sit on it for six weeks in order to tell you about it. But I'll do that tonight as Cinematic Class is about to begin. Your professor is in. Greetings, salutations, another sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and the purveyor of truth in movies. Tonight's lesson plan is a movie called Skyfire. Talk about fooling around with a time-space continuum. If you follow my reviews all through the Christmas season and into the new year, you know that I have a really nice beard. And now you look at me and say, hey, look. He either shaved or it's just growing back in. No, I'm actually recording this six weeks prior to the week that you're seeing it. I had to sit on this one for a while, hold it until there was a, a little deadline removed, you know, an embargo, if you will, as to when we can talk about this. And that's really a shame because I got to tell you, I watched this movie last night and I had a blast with this. And truth up front, normally, I don't have a blast with disaster movies. And that's exactly what this is. It's a disaster movie, but it's an awful lot of fun. It really, really is. And I think one of the main reasons is because Simon West did this movie. Now, if you go and look up Simon West's credentials, you're going to see an awful lot of great films on there uh, that he has been involved with. So he's a seasoned vet. He knows what he's doing. And he has taken the formula of the disaster film and really peaked it out. So, okay, this disaster film deals with Volcano. And I'll come straight out and tell you it's the best disaster film I've seen since the movie Volcano. How many years ago about the volcano erupting in... Uh, in Los Angeles. That was an awful lot of fun. This one, uh, similar in that it's also a volcano, but uh, it's, 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 it's really exceptionally well-paced. Let me give you some of the people that really make this worthwhile, because I think that'll be, uh, that'll be, uh, you know, give you an idea of what's going on here. The director of cinematography for this is Alan Godillo, and uh, I, I think he's probably the star of the movie. He has shot this thing great. I mean, his his shot composition is great. And there's a, for experienced camera, there is a, a sweet spot, if you will, where you get the, the lighting, the coloring, and the contrast. Most important, the contrast just right so that things that are meant to be vivid are vivid and things that are meant to be a little more subtle in the background are that way. And he's, he's captured this one, Alan. Uh, has got this one down on on every shot. It's it's looking great, and uh, visually, this movie is definitely worthwhile. Uh, kudos to Alan; he's really the star of the film. Noon Orsati is the action director of this, and he's done this fairly well. There's <laughs> there's a couple of scenes. Um, the scene with the the guy trying to jump from the one monorail to the other, and uh, the other scene is the guy on the skidoo. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> They're the kind of thing when you see them and you're watching a movie and, you, you know, you have to wow, go again out loud because it's just, it's it's really that well. There's a really good score on this by Pinar Torpak, uh, who has done it. The special effects supervisor for this was Bob Mercier. So although it's a Chinese production, uh, we got a lot of people, uh, mixed culture, uh, working on this. And I think it really... Uh, in the long run, it really looks good. These people behind, under Simon West's direction, they've done a great job in putting this thing together. Okay, so this movie starts out uh, with a with an incident uh, where two uh, volcanists uh, are, are actually trapped in a, a volcano which erupts suddenly. 
and uh, their little girl is privy to this, and she sees the mom die, all right? And this causes a, a rift between uh, the father and the daughter, and we jump ahead 20 years in the future, okay? Same volcano, same island. Let me give you the, uh, the location on the, uh, on the island for this thing so that you know what we're talking about. Uh, it's set in the tropical island of the part of it that's called the Ring of Fire, okay? And the, the young girl, who is now also a volcanologist, Ming, uh, she is on this island, the same island with the same volcano that killed her mom. And they're developing a system called the Zuque. I hope I said that right. System uh, that will map out volcanoes and tell them how and when there's, it's all digital and it's all high tech and it's all very, very now, 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 now. But of course, it's her father who uses the old fashioned, well proven ways who says, you know, this volcano is going to blow again. And he goes to try to, you know, save her. Naturally, she turns out to be a class A bitch instead of listening to her dad and getting the hell off the island. She's going to be, you know, I am woman, watch me roar. I know better than you. And well, he, you can just imagine what happens at that point, right? Okay, let me see now if I can uh, really butcher up some names for you here and let you know the stars of this movie. We have in this film, uh, Meng, who is played, the, our lead, is played by Wang Zhenkui. Uh, apologies, hope I got that right. Uh, very well-known actress in, uh, in uh, at China. Uh, starring along with her is Hannah uh, Quinlivan, and starring with them is Sean Doe and Jason Isaacs, who you'll immediately recognize, a uh, very famous uh, uh, character, British actor, is in this as well. And frankly, folks, they all do it. They all do a fine job. Uh, you really want to knock Ming right on her butt in the beginning of this movie because she's just not respecting her dad at all. A lot of good special effects. Some of the plot you'll say, well, yeah, I guess they kind of sort of have to do that because it's a disaster movie. But there are some neat scenes in this that uh, that you won't expect and you won't see coming. The one scene that's really neat is the proposal scene, which happens underwater. First off, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a pretty slick way to propose. I got to admit, that was pretty clever. And then, you know, naturally the consequences afterwards are uh, are worthwhile. So, Normally, I'm not a big fan of disaster movies, but this one was just put together exceptionally well. Now, it is in Cantonese, so you are going to have to read the subtitles to it, but believe me, it's worthwhile. Uh, it's very fast-paced. The action moves quickly. Uh, the actors are doing a fine job putting this together. There are a couple of scenes, one or two, where you look and go, oh, matting was a little off on that, but, but minor details because the rest of the movie which is filled with special effects, is absolutely uh, fantastic. And I think you'll enjoy watching this one because it's very pleasing on the eyes. And now that you have learned what you have learned, here are the three lessons.